Hello and welcome to Collect the Thoughts, the show where I talk about video games and review them usually. And today we're going to be talking about a bit of a different one, and that is the season pass for The Evil Within. Which, you know, it's not going to be the most viewed video on my channel for sure, but this specific piece of content is something that I've been meaning to play for quite a while now. I bought the season pass for this game a really long time ago and by a really long time ago I mean I think I was like 15 when I did it. I've never been the type to buy season pass or even DLC for games I usually don't really have a big interest in them and I'll be honest The Evil Within was also not a game I particularly wanted to play more of after I finished it but I remember that when I bought this I actually haven't even finished Evil Within yet. I already kind of knew I wasn't a huge fan but I did it anyways. The way the story goes is I bought the Evil Within with some prize money that I got from this forum thing on PlayStation and then I had some money left and I thought well why don't I get the season path which was really only like five bucks I think on sale back then and this is the type of situation where I think most normal people would have just forgotten about it you know it wasn't any loss to them they would just move on because they didn't care and I should have done that because I didn't particularly care that much for the evil within in fact it actually took me quite a while to finish it for real given it has you know it's not the best ps4 game let's be honest it has a lot of weird issues that do thankfully get patched later on but also introduce new problems the frame rate is not great I think that's the main one and a lot of those issues permeate into this game which is uh, also makes it weirder that I would come back to it but like most things in life it was kind of a chance and a random thing where I was playing around with upscaling on my computer upscaling video I mean and so I couldn't really use it to play video games for a bit and so I just turned on my PS4 and this game was in my library just kind of staring at me like remember when you paid for me and so I kind of just did it I just downloaded it and played it again or for most of it I played it for the first time. I hadn't really played much besides the first DLC, the assignment, which I immediately dismissed because it doesn't even play like The Evil Within. Which is like, why are we removing one of the two things that's like cool about The Evil Within? The survival horror aspect. To turn it into this more, you know, outlast experience where you can't really defend yourself and you're mostly stealthing around, which was kind of popular back then. And I'm not a huge fan of that genre, primarily because it kind of just feels like bad or boring stealth where you're just kind of sneaking around and you don't really have any tools to work with. And this is a problem I have with fully fledged games. So you know, this small DLC that kind of just does it half-assedly isn't really gonna change my mind on this genre. But I guess we're already in the review, hopefully, because we're like three minutes into this. But basically in the assignment and also in the consequence, which we'll talk more in a bit, you play as Judy from the main game. She's a secondary character and the story takes place during the Evil Within, kind of as a what she was doing during the story kind of thing. And if you were big into the Evil Within story, then sure, this is cool, but also, who cares? It is a fairly mundane story, and it's really more for the fans who just kind of like this kind of thing. It's for the type of people that thinks that the Evil Within had a good story. That was really mean, I'm really sorry. You're not an idiot if you like the Evil Within story or if you obsess over horror stories, that's fine. I'm not- I'm just being an asshole, I'm sorry. Regardless, I think most people won't really care. That's what I'm saying. I think the major thing here is you get a new boss and that's really the main thing. His name is Shade and he will show up in both the DLCs about her. And I'll be honest, he kind of sucks. He's not even the best boss in this DLC. I'm not gonna outright spoil who the best boss in the DLC is, but I'll make it very easy to know who it is. It's the other guy in the group. You know, there's Judy, there's the main character Sebastian, and then there's another dude. I think he's a boss in the original Evil Within 2. I don't know. I actually, it's been too long. Sorry. 
this is not a very comprehensive review. This is a very scattered, I just kind of was like, I'm going to talk about this game I played because... I haven't really played a lot of video games this week kind of thing. Regardless, I think the main problem with the main boss, Shade, is that she? I don't know. It kind of looks very feminine. It's like a spotlight with legs and red high heels. You know, very sexy character design. But basically the way she works is towards more this hide and seek gameplay where she illuminates the path ahead of her and you want to avoid being there or should I say, you want to avoid being spotted. That's a very bad joke. Moving on. I think the main problem with her is that when you are in these boss situations, you're stuck in a room trying to avoid her for a period of time. And that would be fine, except one, the design of these rooms is incredibly boring. It's literally like a grid of servers, because they're usually server rooms. That's kind of the theme here and then adding to that is the very erratic movement from this boss it really just felt like her movement was borderline unpredictable which made it very hard for you to move around and avoid it and then if you get spotted and she manages to point her spotlight at you then you become even more slow making it basically at that point that you're gonna get caught and lose unless you're right next to a corner. And the first encounter I had with this boss really pissed me off, it was insanely annoying. I kept trying to beat it the way the game wants me to play, by hiding, but whether or not I got caught never felt like I had anything to do with my skill of hiding, but more with the boss just running in my direction for no discernible reason. I do think it's really bad when the way I did end up beating it was just by running around to whatever opposite corner she was in, which is, you know, riveting gameplay. But to be fair, Shade does get better in the, the consequent DLC, which we're gonna talk about now. But to finish off the assignment, it is the worst one out of the three. It's too long, it's the longest one, it's the one that doubles down on this gameplay, making it very slow and not particularly enjoyable, for me at least, I must say that, you know, if you're into this type of gameplay, maybe you will enjoy it, but for me, it didn't work out. Then we have the consequence, which right at the beginning seemed like more of the same, but the consequence ends up being just a lot more of a balanced experience. By interchanging this kind of stealth gameplay with some more action-y focused traditional survival horror in the gameplay style of The Evil Within. Even though it does often feel like the game is kind of making fun of you, like oh you wanted this didn't you? Anyways here's a cutscene of your gun falling off a cliff, good luck. And it does this thing of teasing you with a good time often enough in this very short DLC to make me think that it was some kind of inside joke. Like they added shooting to this DLC because the fans wanted, not particularly the developers. And in the defense of the developers, if that is the case, it might not be, the stealth sections in the consequence are slightly better. The level design is a bit more interesting and there's also not as many just corridor sections where you only really have one way of hiding, making it kind of boring. Which I guess I didn't mention that when talking about the assignment, but that game felt very restricted in its design. It's a linear game, but you know, you can have some level of openness, especially in a game that's all about kind of sneaking around. And, you know, the consequence kind of fixes that a little bit. But uh, the major thing here definitely isn't that. The noticeable change is really just adding more action and allowing you to defend yourself a lot more. Making the final boss fight with Shade actually pretty alright and enjoyable. Not that the assignment didn't have an enjoyable boss fight, it was kind of cool but it was kind of like the Mr. Freeze fight from Arkham City but not as good. That's for the boss fight I said I wasn't gonna spoil but kind of did. Regardless that being said they still find a way to fuck this up and Shade's first appearance in this DLC is also another really bad boss fight. It's kind of like the one in the first game 
except now you can't just run around and cheese it. You actually have to stand still and press a button and you kind of just have to hope he doesn't run at you during that time. The strategy for this one though is fairly simple. You just kind of hang around around the button next to the nearest corner and just hope that the monster doesn't go at you and goes to the other side of the room when then you click the button and hope he doesn't run back, basically. Overall though, there's not much to say about the consequences. Story-wise, it just continues the assignment, so if you were into that kind of lore of the evil within, then you'll enjoy it, and if not, then you won't really care. It's better because they give you a gun, sometimes. Now let's move on to the completely separate and, in my opinion, the best and most interesting DLC in this series, The Executioner. Based on probably the most popular boss in The Evil Within, The Keeper, here you play as him in this first person melee focused combat. It is very interesting as you are actually playing as him not like the past him or how he became like this. You're actually playing as a big guy with a big hammer that does a lot of damage and it's quite fun. The way the gameplay works is you have a hammer which is your main weapon and you can kind of bash zombies. Are they called zombies in this game? I forget. Regardless, you bash them and then you can pick them up and throw them or you can pick other things and throw at them. And then as the game progresses you get other weapons that add to the gameplay making it easier or just giving you more flexibility like being able to drop traps or maybe a more ranged weapon. The cool thing about this is that it's usually weapons from other bosses as the executioner kind of plays a little bit like a boss rush at points where you have this area you reach and then you unlock doors linearly by entering one and beating the boss inside of it usually. There is combat with regular enemies, but it is clear that the bosses are the main focus. Which I think kinda is a missed opportunity because the combat with the regular enemies is actually quite fun, especially when they throw a lot of them at you. But it fortunately it almost never happens, it's very rare for the game to throw any more than three regular enemies at you. Another small complaint is the progression system. Like I said, you get weapons from bosses and other ways, but you mostly get them by spending the in-game currency, which I think is a bit annoying to do. As if you want to get everything, you'll probably have to replay the game, and I just don't think that this would be very replayable, even with the new weapons. A way that this would be more replayable would be if there were more ways of fighting just regular enemies. But weirdly enough, in this one section where you can go and just fight regular enemies as kind of a grinding room, they usually only really throw two or three enemies at you at once. Which is, you know, not particularly challenging and it really feels like you're just doing it for the coins. And with that said, this was still the most fun out of the DLCs. And primarily just from the way it plays, it is very unique in that way. There's not a lot of games that let you play as the villains of horror. And even the ones that do usually kind of only exist in asymmetric multiplayer games like Friday the 13th. And so in that way, this was also just very interesting to me, I guess. As even though the bosses are all rehashed from the original game, because of the way you play it in this more melee focused style, it does make it play fundamentally different. Even though for some reason the final boss of this DLC plays almost exactly like it does in the original game, that was very weird. Especially since, and I'm not gonna spoil it, but he is the most important one story-wise to this character and it just kind of feels weird that it plays the same. Even if there might be like some lore reason for it, I'm not sure. Now, since the Executioner is the one I would actually recommend people playing out of this season pass, which thankfully you can just get it separately, I do think I should talk a bit more about how it plays. And basically, it is a bit of a slow melee combat, as you are playing as kind of a big, slow guy. 
but even with that said he does kinda hit fast and hard which makes his combat surprisingly satisfying despite how also very janky and disconnected it can feel at times especially when fighting bosses. That's why I say I actually kind of prefer the fighting with regular enemies and I would have rather seen more challenge in that because with them it actually feels rather nice but with the bosses you can kind of just feels like you're swinging at them and it's a bit disconnected even if you're actually landing the hits. Also important to mention that it is very short and like I said before while there is replayability I don't think it is done particularly well here. But also it costs three dollars even when not on sale so I have no qualms recommending it if you already own The Evil Within. And so to finish this off I'll be scoring each one individually and then just the season pass overall. So here we go, the assignment, the first and worst one is getting a 4 out of 10. It's like a bad outlast, I'm sorry. Then the consequence is getting a 5 out of 10, it's okay. It fixes some of my issues with the assignment and it's also shorter which is kind of a plus I think. But it's also not particularly great in any way and I don't think there's much reason to play it unless you've played the assignment. And then the executioner. I'll be honest if I was to be like a very professional reviewer and I was like adding up the numbers then maybe this would have been like a 6 but I really enjoyed it. It was very fun to play this after the other two which I guess maybe also kind of made it a bit biased. But I think the Executioner deserves the 7 out of 10. It is fairly unique. There isn't a whole lot of games that have a similar gameplay and premise. And probably because it would be quite hard to hold for maybe a full game. I don't know, I would actually like to see someone try. But as a short DLC this was very short and sweet. And it's something where even if you just thought The Evil Within was okay, I do think this is still something that you might want to try out. And it actually made it worth it for me to, you know, have come back to these DLCs after all these years and finally finishing them. Now, I usually finish these videos by doing recommendations, but I think I've made it fairly obvious by this point what I think you should be playing out of any of these, if at all. And if you didn't get it yet, just play The Executioner. That's the one you want to play. Anyways, I hope that you enjoyed watching. Please consider subscribing, liking and commenting all the things you can do for free here on YouTube. And regardless of that, I hope that you're having a good day and goodbye. I really did not expect this review to be this long. Looking back, maybe I would have done the assignment and the consequence together since they're a single cohesive story and then the executioner because it's completely separate and that could have kind of worked as two videos but also i really was not in the mood to do that so whatever i don't think anyone cares this is a review of a season path for a game that came out at this point seven years ago god i'm old